coming back to New Orleans for a second straight week. It's great for us here on Top Rank Boxing as we move inside the Mahalia Jackson Theater for the Performing Arts near Harris Casino. Well, hi everybody, I'm Al Bernstein here with Dave Bontempo and as the eyes of the boxing world look to another party town out there in the desert, we are happy to be here in New Orleans uh, where we have, Dave, what I think could be one of our best matchups in months. Al, this is a good old-fashioned matchup. You've got a WBU junior middleweight title fight. The combined records of the fighters, 53-1, and one. perfect. Yeah, and a couple of very good young fighters who are very much approaching their peak. Stevie Martinez is a young man who's been rated highly by a number of organizations, and he is a guy who has shown lots of skills in getting there. And he's been up as high as number two by the WBO before. Good record, undefeated, the 20 knockouts going in there. Just the one draw. Good power has come in there before. Now, this is his opportunity to shine. A title fight situation for him. People have been waiting to see how good he is. We may get some inkling here. We should because he's facing a very tough man. However, for Emmett Linton, I think we can safely say Linton is going against by far the toughest opponent he has fought, and this Southpaw would like to prove something. Emmett Linton is facing his most powerful opponent. Very good record there, the 10 knockouts, a couple of losses. He's a Southpaw, needs to utilize the entire ring. He's on a bit of a winning streak right now, but like his opponent, Steve Martinez, he comes into this fight on a roll. All right, so that promises to be a very, very competitive match. But to kick things off, we will go to the heavyweight division, and there's a youngster named Quinn Navarre, who you last saw lose here in New Orleans to Jeremy Williams. He would like to erase that from his mind by beating Muhammad Abdin. They fought to a draw once before, so a bunch of even fights tonight. We hope a bunch of good ones. To kick things off, let's go to the center of the ring for James Belanger. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mahalia Jackson Theatre Performing Arts, where tonight, Harris Casino, top-ranked boxing and Budweiser, the King of Beers, presents professional boxing live on ESPN. All fights tonight are sanctioned by the Louisiana Boxing Commission, Mr. Leonard Miller, Chairman of the Commission, Buddy Imanata, Commissioner. This first fight is scheduled for 10 rounds in the heavyweight division, in the red corner. Wearing the black trunks with the red trim, weighing in at 206 pounds from Syria, with an undefeated record of 17-0-3, six by knockouts, Mohammed Abdi. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim, Weighing in at 223 pounds from New Orleans, Louisiana, with a record of 17, 2 and 1, 12 by knockout, Quinn Navarre. Your referee is Paul Sita. Time for the rules here in Louisiana, Dave. Well, Al, three knockdowns in a round would end the fight. The standing eight would count as one of those knockdowns. Only the referee can stop the fight. Fighter can be saved by the bell only in the last round, and the accidental butt. Halfway or more, go to the scorecards. Halfway or less, it's a technical draw. There is Quinn Navar, who you last saw here on Top Rank Boxing in a losing effort to Jeremy Williams. He's made some changes since then. We'll talk about that as thing goes on, as things go on. And Ahmad Abdeen is his uh, his opponent, 20-year-old, originally from Syria, and. You heard uh, James Belanger mention that he is now residing in Houston. He came here when he was 16 years old to the United States and started his career as an amateur here and has been fighting out of uh, Houston. And Bob Spagnola, who has been handling his affairs, remembers when Abdeen was 140 pounds, he first walked into his gym. Now, you see both fighters have slimmed quite a bit. Navarre down 14 pounds, and Abdeen is down four pounds over their last fight. Of course, both fighters have been up in the high 240s not too long ago, so they've really come down even more. And I, just looking at Quinn Navarre, we've done some of his fights. I have never, ever, ever, ever seen him in this kind of condition. He looks cut and uh, looks probably much like he looked when he played football. He was a very fine uh, college football player. Good uh, double left hook there at Southern University. He was an all-conference back in the South Southwestern Athletic Conference, the SWAC. Good right hand by Abdeen. 
This is a nice matchup. They fought once before in November, uh, had a draw in four rounds. Obviously, they've both improved since then, and this should be interesting. It's nice to see what they've done in the last two years, what adjustments they've made, and they've done it just in time. Navarre talking to us this morning said the biggest difference now down at 223 instead of 249. He can throw uppercuts on the inside and not feel like he's dragging that arm anymore. He can fire it away more quickly. And there he just threw one. It's nice to see something. Now, that loss that Navarre had to Jeremy Williams, he was dominated in that fight. And he had high hopes coming in. He really thought he could do better. And here, instead of just giving it up or forgetting about the sport, he makes a genuine effort to try and improve himself and come back better next time. And you go one of two ways when disaster strikes. Did you get far worse or you rededicate yourself? And Navarre did rededicate himself with the conditioning coach, taking all the weight off, running five miles every other day. And you can see what it's done for him. It really has paid off conditioning-wise. Abdeen uh, landing, throwing some combinations. Now, Abdeen, of course, undefeated, but he does have the three draws. One of them, we mentioned, coming against Queen Navarre. And interesting, when you talk about the stamina factor, Abdeen believes his weakness in all those fights has been stamina, fading in the late rounds of fights. Under a half minute left to go here in round one. It's been a very active first round, especially for heavyweights. Here's the uppercut on the inside Dave talked about. Abdeen has showed us a very good double left hook. So nice matchup of a couple of heavyweights trying to make their way into the upper echelon of that weight division. We'll be back for round two. Talked about this punch this morning, the uppercut. Now, if he's a little heavier, maybe he doesn't get that punch in. That was nice and quick and barely got in. We headed to round two and uh, coming out with that double left hook. Ahmad Abdeen. Muhammad Abdeen, excuse me. Um, there is uh, the punch numbers from round one. Very tight. Tough round. Navarre just with a slight edge there. They both got 13 power shots in. and But this was not the typical feeling out round for heavyweights. It was a nice pace being set. And when we talked last round about the weight differential, okay, a lot of that is only over the past couple fights. And these guys have trimmed down remarkably and show the benefits of that condition. Nice uppercut by Quinn Navarre to the head of Mohammed Abdeen. You're looking at two guys right now with heavyweight power but middleweight quickness. And you know what? They're both fighting at their best right here. And they're not suggesting either of these guys are ready to be top 10 contenders at this moment. But you know what? They're both in better shape than they've ever been in. They're both trying. They're both, they've both learned their craft better. This is the best we've seen these two guys. Right. They both have all the techniques down, going forward, double left hooks, downstairs, upstairs. And the movement, side to side, that's been there, showing you the reaction time that a guy has when he's in better shape is certainly there. We're in round two. We fought at pretty even terms here so far. Both men using the jab a lot. There's the double, there's the left hook downstairs, which um, Abdeen has a good one. And that was a mini battle within the battle right there. As Navarro landed a grazing left hook to the head. And Abdeen got one down inside to the body. The battle of the hooks. And you're looking at guys essentially with similar weapons. And this will indeed boil down to conditioning. And there's the hook downstairs by Quinn Navarre. Navarre, a 28-year-old from here in New Orleans. Heavy punches here by Abdeen, the left hooks. A whale away on the inside, nothing hugely significant landing. We talk about these guys going back and working their craft. They're in the right division for instant rebirth. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? You're never out of it in the heavyweight division, are you? The seconds remaining here in round two. It's been, again, a pretty equal round in which both men have gotten some pretty good work done. We'll be back for round three in this scheduled 10 round. Stay with us. Our comes out to meet Mohammed Abdeen. Here in the uh, third round of the scheduled 10-rounder, heavyweights, uh, Navarre in the uh, blue trunks. 
from here in New Orleans and from Houston via Syria, Mohamed Abdin. And Abdin with a nice edge in round two. They both threw the similar amount, but Abdin's connect percentage very high there. Counter right over the left hook of Abdin. I was going to comment, as Abdin continues to lead off with that left hook to the body, Dave, wouldn't the counter right work? And Navar got it in there. <laughs> He figured if you got your question in first, it would be obvious maybe to his opponent. Navar has the knockout ratio, so to take your point even further, if Abdeen makes a mistake, Navar would be the most likely to capitalize on these two, and Abdeen already in some stamina turmoil here. And I think right there, just as the graphic came up, Navar got his attention with some power. They were just yelling at Navar not to lunge. He used to do that a lot. And in this fight especially, I have to say, for both these men, we've seen both of them before, probably Navar a little bit more than Abdin. I have never seen the two of them as uh, poised and disciplined with their punches as they are. Well, for Navar especially, it's essentially the first fight of his career. He's got the conditioning guru. He went over a lot of things, retooled himself. So he's going into this like his record is zero and zero, forgetting all past bad habits. And he has been more controlled in this fight and really keeping away the urge to lunge. Get their punches up. There's Abdin with a good left hook to the body that actually got a warning to the referee for being a little bit low. That was a nasty jab Navar was able to smash into the face here of Abdin. And Abdin showing the first signs of fatigue in this fight. Bob Spagnola, the uh, manager of uh, Abdin, said he thought this was an intermediate step uh, to see where his fighter was at. And that's probably a good way to phrase it, but maybe they didn't think they'd face the retooled version of uh, Quinn Navar. And they certainly sure knew even if they did, they, they have to face this test at some point to see if they can make some money and if he can belong up at a higher weight class, you know, a, a higher caliber of opponent. And what better way to find out than against somebody you fought a couple years ago? There's the uppercut by Navar. So again, a very, very interesting third round. Probably a better round for Navar, but uh, Abdin got his work done as well, especially to the body. We head into round four when we come back. <laughs> we'll take a look at what being lighter gives Quinn Navar. Two for the price of one opening here. The right hand straight and then the uppercut coming in. We head into round four in the scheduled town 10 rounder, Quinn Navar in the blue trunks. Um, Mohammed Abdin is in the black, and so are Dave Montempo and I, as always. And the cumulative effort, Abdin with higher numbers landed, but he had a big edge in round two. Now, two of the other three rounds, Navar had better individual rounds, so this could be interesting as far as how the judges are going to tabulate this. And it's a very important thing to note when you look at the numbers of punch profile. Um, some guys could win a round by 10, 12, 13 punches and still be very close or even be in the, in the total numbers because the other rounds, as Dave said, they've lost by a, a little bit and boxing ultimately becomes a, a, a sport that's scored by the round. You know, Quinn Navarre, we mentioned, uh, he is so much fitter and throwing punches so much better than he did when he took on Jeremy Williams here. Now, clearly Jeremy Williams was a little better fighter, but still Navarre looks better. And Coming to a level of competition he's familiar with and confident against has also helped along with the rededication of his career. He looks like, I'm sure in his mind, he should have looked the last 10 fights this way. And Abdeen, to his credit, walking right through at times and paying no mind to the fit state of Navarre, looking for his body punching, which has been his best action in this fight and also sometimes a very unappreciated art. Yeah, we, we were talking about that uh, before. As a body punch, you look at Abdin, you, you, you have to say to yourself, that's his ticket in the future because his leverage on those body punches is excellent. A little over a minute left to go here in round four. Good heavyweight encounter. 20-year-old Muhammad Abdin in the black trunks and 28-year-old Quinn Navar in the blue trunks. His nickname is Cujo. You see it on his uh, on his trunks. Of course, uh, it was the bad dog in the Stephen King novel, and that's why he got the nickname. They say he's a bad dog. 
I don't read Stephen King, do you? I, I'm not a mystery I, fan. Some of his novels. Do you? Some I of mean, his I, novels. I know he's a talented writer, but I, I just don't like to be scared that much. <laughs> Even in a book. I'm a scaredy cat. <laughs> Half a minute left to go in round four. And we get letters from Stephen King. The, the fans. The scaredy cat doesn't like the bad yeah. dog. <laughs> Here's that body work from Abdeen. It is excellent. Good right hand. They are exchanging so evenly in this bout. I dread the job the judges are going to have to do. This is a very difficult bout to score. But we got six big rounds to go, and uh, these men are throwing a lot of punches. Someone could get tired. We'll take on Emmett Linton, a classy southpaw, former amateur champion, as they go after the WBU version of the junior middleweight title. That's coming up in our main event. That is Mohammed Abdeen, the big heavyweight from Syria. Came to the United States at the age of 16, settled in Houston, where he has made his way as a professional boxer, first as an amateur boxer, then a pro, and taking on Quinn Navarre, the local product from here in New Orleans, and they have so far put on a very entertaining heavyweight match for us. And you often see heavyweights fade after a good early round or two, but this has been an intriguing match, a pretty good chess match at times. Styles that offset each other, so it really comes down to who wants to jab the best, who wants to go to the hook. These guys can look in the mirror and see one another. That is true. The, really, the only difference probably is they both have good jabs, both throwing the right, but the money punch on the inside is the hook for Abdeen and the uppercut for Navarre. And they both gave us an example right there. I love when they do these things on cue. And they have been going to that throughout the fight. And also, what you like to see is setting up those opportunities, not just winging them off balance or back on their heels. They're usually putting that punch behind something else, thinking sequentially in the fight. Uh, Dean working to the body. Well, he's heavyweights. Of course, a lot of attention being focused on Las Vegas, where Bo Holyfield will be going on. And in our ringside report, we're going to have a uh, chance to focus in on that fight, showing an interview I did with uh, Riddick Bo. And then later on in the show, we hope we'll have time to show you an interview with uh, Vander Holyfield. And we'll be chatting with you a little bit about the events surrounding Mike Tyson's fight being canceled. Uh, but in this heavyweight matchup, couldn't be closer, could it? A parody party so far. They've offset each other and really had some nice moments each. Dave with more alliteration than anyone could <laughs> ask for. <laughs> A minute left to go here in round five. We're just about. And the level of intensity and punches has not gone down here in this spot as we're heading toward the halfway point. Both men have started everything off with the jab, and there are good examples of it. And that's refreshing to see, isn't it? It really is that these guys have gone back and obtained good work in their fundamentals going into this fight. Starting it behind the jab, thinking in terms of combinations, and not waiting too long to get the offense going. I'll tell you something else. For a 20-year-old, Mohammed Abdin has learned well. Any 20-year-old as a heavyweight that can fight like that, you have to like some part of his future. Well, our future will include the sixth round, I can assure you of that. And we'll be back for it in just a moment. Mohammed Abdin comes out. Uh, to meet Quinn of I mentioned up was 20 with some conflicting information here. He's actually 22, but um, nonetheless still very young and still very poised. There are the numbers through five rounds. Interesting, Abdin with really a pretty good uh, advantage there, Dave. He really has opened up in terms of the numbers, and there's a good example. Body shot and then the hook to the head. And in one respect, on the numbers, he is getting respect for everything he's done here in the vault. could be disqualified and just because he tried it truthfully I'd take a point, point. That's he, a he point. is taking a point away I believe and appropriately so yes because what if he lands is. that's very unlike Quinn Navarre it is very good point all right 
saw a point taken away from Quinn Devar, who tries to nail Muhammad Abdeen as he slipped and was down. Abdeen is fighting very well here now, landing jabs and straight right hands. And also fighting maybe just a little bit madder here yes. after what Navar tried to do. Abdeen is lucky Navar did not nail him with that shot. Although maybe Navar is lucky because if yes. he knocks him out, he's disqualified. And the fact that the referee was already on top of it to take the point away indicates that a good shot there could have resulted in a disqualification. And that was a case where Navarre had plenty of time to think about his actions. As you well know, that is a pet peeve in boxing, that they don't often take points away from guys. Oh, there's another one. Take it there, too. You got to take a point away. Yeah, but come on, man. One and taking a point away. Is. I wonder if he did in that point. first case, Dave. One I think maybe point. it was just a warning in the first place. Break. He did not take a point away. We are being informed in the first place. This time he did. Because his act was not, it looked like he was originally. So now a point is deducted from Quinn Navarro. And they're both deductible offenses. No, boy, the first one I think he should have taken a point away. So Quinn Navarro with two really uncharacteristic acts of bad sportsmanship here. And when we've seen that from other guys, we've had the thought that they were trying to get disqualified. That has happened. Yeah. You almost get the feeling maybe Navarre feeling the fight slipping away. He's got a little desperate here. And the frustration setting in on him here. Now he has to go back to the jab to reestablish. And that not only takes a point off in terms of the referee taking points away, but I think it also hurts you the rest of the fight in close rounds in the eyes of the judges. Absolutely. They are, after all, only human, and they may consider that. Round six comes to an end. A round in which Quinn Navarre had a point taken away from him and uh, was fortunate not to have another taken away. We will stay with you and head into the corner of Muhammad Abdin. Well, there's Muhammad Abdin. And now here's Quinn Navarre with uh, Leslie Bananos. Stepping you know tomorrow, buddy. This is it. God damn it. You don't hang these fucking gloves up. You understand me? You look like you don't even want to bat the motherfucker. Fight! Get up. Much emotion in that corner. Well, here's some of the action there as Abdeen with a jab. Referee real close to this here. Nice right hand by Abdeen. This is some of the stuff. Now he slips and no way for Navarre. No way at all. He had plenty of time to think. That's a disqualification by itself. You could make the argument that on that alone, for this attempt, you could disqualify him. And Abdeen knew what was coming. He tripped Navarre up. He saved himself. <laughs> he ducked and uh, Navarre tripped over him. So, and that, there was not a point taken away from there, but later in the round, there was a point taken away from Navarre. If he's not fighting in New Orleans here and in front of the hometown crowd of judges, that could be even more severe. We head into round seven. Quinn Navarre in the blue trunks and uh, Muhammad Abdeen in the black. Quinn Navarre, who got off to a pretty good start in this fight, now digging himself a little hole. The last few rounds have been very good for Abdeen and in addition, a point taken away in the last round. A round that Abdeen probably won anyway. It's a two point round on my card helping Abdeen open it up here, and he's just in a flow, getting it with the body punches, which now really paying a dividend from what he did earlier. Abdeen uh, came in here with a 17-0-3 record, only six KOs, he's not a huge puncher, but he shows you that he's capable of putting punches together. And bearing in mind that Navar had the early edge, this shows Navar in trouble here. Abdeen opening it up. Three points on the official unofficial scorecard. It's official to me, Dave. <laughs> I recognize only you. Under two minutes left here in round seven. Abdeen with a nice straight right hand. Those punches have leverage. Nice combination by Abdeen. And we're seeing Navar he comes back a little bit here. In the earlier rounds, when he moves side to side, he punched. For the first time, we're seeing him move side to side just before that and not do anything, which enabled Abdeen to go right in there and pound. 
you know, as you look at Abdeen at the age of 22, making his way up the ladder in the heavyweights with only the six KOs and his uh, 17 wins, you get the feeling he is very much a classic boxer puncher, not a great knockout artist, but a guy who's pushing for a heavyweight. You look at him, always three, four punches at a time. Really popping things in there and on a different level, although not too much. He brings to mind someone like an Alexander Zulkin, who has been on our show. He's a lefty, but doesn't get big knockouts, but is always busy and always trying to work his opponents down. And, and that Zulkin uh, reference was a good one because he does put those punches together just like Abdeen does. I'm sure you great minds think like Dave, as you were telling me that. A producer was saying in my ear, kind of reminds you of Alexander Zolkin, doesn't he? <laughs> We're all on that one. Unbelievable. We're all on the same page. Not Greg Page, though, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> he didn't put punches together the same way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Only on rare occasions. All right, break. Step back. Seconds remain here in round seven. And uh, for Quinn Navarre, he better get getting. The uh, theater for the performing arts here in New Orleans, we refer, we refer to it as the house that Mahalia built. Hey, Mahalia <laughs> Jackson right here. Named after the great gospel singer. And right now, Abdeen is singing a pretty good tune. Now, this is the category that Navarre was supposed to win handle it if he was going to yeah. take this fight. This is his category, and he's being outdone big time in that department. We've talked throughout this fight about how Abdeen is using that punch effectively, and uh, those numbers show it very well. Scheduled for 10, and... Uh, Mohamed Abdin in the black trunks in the middle rounds here has come on very strongly. In the last round, Quinn Navarre was, the round before this last one, had a point taken away for um, hitting on the break. Could have had a point taken away for hitting Abdin when he was down, but did lose a point in that round. Abdin showing really the point we were making last round about he does everything fairly well. That's exactly he may not right. get out and shine in a particular category, but here in the jab department, he's opened up and taken control of the fight, and the power shots have been in there, and that's why he's pulling away there. Remember Chet Walker, the uh, forward for oh, the yeah. Philadelphia 76ers and the Chicago Bulls? He was one of those guys where all of a sudden you'd look up at the end of the game and he had 26 points, and you didn't really remember him getting them. That's kind of the way Abdeen could be in the heavyweight division. He goes in there, he pounds away, and that's because he's always busy. Even if he's not landing extremely visible combinations, he's busy the entire fight. The punches add up, and then at the end of the fight, he's got a lead on the cards, and he's done a lot for himself. Got over stamina problems and everything. So they work on the inside. There's Navarre doing some pretty good work in there. We mentioned that Navarre it came way down in weight, got himself in very good physical condition for this fight, and he has been much more active in this bout than in some others we've seen. But I think he just ran into a guy tonight in uh, Muhammad Abdeen who was really ready. And both guys are improving, but Abdeen at this point is improving more readily. There's the jab from Navarre that he's wanted to get in. Nothing he has thrown so far, and I have to say nothing Abdin has thrown, has been the kind of punch that has really hurt his opponent badly. Although I think uh, a couple of rounds ago, Abdin may have gotten Navarre's attention with a couple of real strong combinations. We're heading into that part of the fight where stamina uh, becomes uh, a question. Abdin has been 10 rounds one time in his career. Quinn Navarre has never been past eight. So Quinn will head into no man's land when we come back. And he's already losing. Tough spot now. We head into round nine here in New Orleans. Uh, the Mahalia Jackson Theater for the Performing Arts right near Harris Casino, the sponsor of this event. Al Bernstein along with Dave Bontempo. We're glad you joined us for Top Rank Boxing. It's been a very good heavyweight matchup and uh, very close in round eight. And the numbers going down in the connection and drastically as far as the numbers being thrown as the pace of the fight catches up to these guys really for the first time. It took quite a lot of rounds for the pace to slow like that. Well, we're here, we're here, of course, lots of doings back in Las Vegas. One of the things I want to mention tonight at the Tropicana, they're having a first annual Dick Sadler Awards Banquet, which is uh, going to help raise money for Archie Moore's 
a nonprofit foundation called ABC Anybody Can. It's uh, uh, to help youth step off uh, in life with their first best foot forward and uh, benefiting an organization that Archie Moore is very involved in and uh, trying to help out. They're honoring Dick Sadler, Muhammad Ali, Butch Lewis. How about him, the promoter, Sugar Ray Leonard? Sean O'Grady, isn't he an announcer? Well, that's the category that okay. we have to get in there for next year. Joe Frazier and George Foreman, among others. So. Nice event. We uh, hope to have a good time back in Vegas. We're having a good time here in New Orleans, where Quinn Navar in the blue trunks and Muhammad Abdeen in the black going at it. In the ninth round, Navar has never been to the ninth round. Abdeen has been here once. I have to say, Navar is throwing a lot of punches here in the ninth and did have a pretty good eighth round. And that bodes well because usually fighters can get past the last round when they're going up like this on adrenaline alone. And you see them take off the round before the last one, but Navarre pushing it here knowing that he has to make something happen. Don't you feel a subtle shift here in this yes. last round and yes. this round? It looks like Navarre has a little bit more in the tank right now than Abdeen. Well, Abdeen as they go back, they may find that Abdeen spent his more wisely. He may be hurting right now. He can come out in the 10th round. The 8th round was very close. But when he spent his, he piled up a lot of points. Right now, Navarre is having a bit of a stamina surge here. Is there any chance in your mind that Navarre could win this without getting a knockout? I think he at least needs a knockdown to get himself in the fight that way just because he let too many rounds slip away. He was in there early and a little bit ahead, but uh, Abdeen had a major push in rounds four through seven and eight. Well, a very nice ninth round for Quinn Navarre. Certainly his best round in the last four or five. He is getting to Muhammad Abdeen a little bit on the inside, and I'm sure Les Bonanno in his corner is thinking, where was this in the last four rounds? And let's remember, a point was deducted from Quinn Navarre in the sixth round for hitting on the break. Well, he almost did it again, didn't he? But he just restrained himself. I think that round was a couple seconds short. We're getting ready to head into the 10th round, and uh, let's listen in. Sometimes it gets tired of what you're looking, but you need room to punch. You're smothering yourself against the guy, right? When he gets to you, turn him on an angle so you give yourself some room. Wait a minute, the guy is fighting, but he don't want to fight. This is the last round. You can make him quick. Be smart, but you got to get his ass. You understand? All right, buddy. Come on, man. That is uh, Muhammad's dad. Who trains him. That's a thing, right? Syrian is the religious of choice. And so, as he comes out for round 10, Muhammad Abdin, who has performed quite well in this match, probably has an edge in our mind. But in the last two rounds, Quinn Navar has turned up the heat. An example of how well Navar did in the ninth round. Yeah, he opened it up, and that's his widest edge in punches landed in six rounds. Good hook on the inside by Navar, but here comes Abdin back. Tooled himself, gotten into much better condition, improved himself as a fighter, but it's on the line now because he could be in danger of losing his decision to Abdeen. And they do not have that urgency between rounds telling him that, that the fight could get lost. They said, you'd like to have this round, you need it, but not, you need a knockout or anything like that. So very interesting how this will come down on the cards. Well, an excellent 10th round for both, and there's the body work by Abdeen, which has been absent for the last few rounds. And maybe that's why I lost those rounds. But I think Abdeen was trying to save up a little something for the 10th round, but in doing so, may have given Navarre a jump start in rounds eight and nine that he has parlayed here and is really coming on. Good combination, so there's no question. 
question. Quinn Navarre has done well in the last two rounds, maybe the last three. But again, he had a point deducted in the sixth round. Let's not forget, though, some very close rounds in the first three or four rounds of this fight. So before we completely jump off the track with Quinn Navarre and count him out of this fight, let's remember that some of the early rounds were close. But the middle rounds, a very decided edge for Abdeen. And that's how the thing is swung. And if Navarre would lose this by a point, you know he'll be kicking himself for that infraction. Well, it was a very stupid infraction. And just before that, he threw a punch that should have been caused for a point deduction when uh, Abdeen was down. How about if Abdeen loses it by a point? Would he be distressed that there wasn't a point taken away when he slipped down and uh, he, Navarre punched at him? Very distressed indeed, and also distressed that he didn't do enough in the late rounds. But he is trying here. He knows that in the past he hasn't done enough late in the fight, and he's addressed that here. They both have in terms of their stamina. Good 10th round for Navarro, though Dean landed a very good left hook a moment ago, but he has landed the fewer number of punches. And no question, Mohamed Abdeen holding on is tired. Now Quinn Navarro wishes this were a 12 rounder, doesn't he? The way he's gotten his momentum together, absolutely so. He's come through this going from eight to 10, better probably than he could have hoped in these late rounds. Well, a couple of rounds ago, I said that uh, Quinn Navarre better get getting, and he did. And uh, is it enough to get him back in the hunt in this decision? Well, the conditioning paid off for Navarre because he was able to come back strong. And uh, both men embrace at the end of this fight. Both men did a very, very nice job in this spot. Incredible job. They were matched well. They both came on at the end and did the very best they could. Fought pretty much to their ability level. And for Muhammad Abdeen, he'll look, maybe it wasn't 12 perfect rounds, but it was two or three more perfect rounds than in previous fights. He stepped it up a level and put more good situations in the bank here tonight and really came up with a nice performance. Well, we expect nice performances on uh, college football here on ESPN. College. That is Muhammad Abdeen awaiting, as we all are, what could be a very interesting decision. How, did you eventually, did you have him winning that fight? Abdeen by three, taking into account yeah. one point he was penalized for, Correct. but also the eighth round was extremely close. I went one way. If you go the other way at home, now you're looking at a one-point fight. So the eighth round, very critical on that thinking as well. And three points for Abdeen, but very razor thin. And Abdeen there with a, a nice edge as far as the punches are concerned, but Navarre with a pretty good percentage as well. And these are guys that rose up a level and gave us a good effort tonight. I think those numbers indicate what you said. Navarre probably ended up winning this fight by a couple of rounds, and with the and with the point added on, uh, I think would make him the winner. But again, the judges have the final say. Nice we take a peek uh, back in the, the early portion of round ten, where. Quinn now this is was where they way. were really coming on good stamina at the end of the fight there as Abdeen missing with the uppercut lands the jab. Navarre looked like he was hurt for a second but you see now Abdeen coming in there and there's the uppercut by Navarre. We didn't see enough of that tonight from him and if he loses that might be one reason why that, that punch wasn't in vogue enough especially in the middle rounds of the fight. You know whether or what though as you look at Navarre because he's the older guy trying to get things rekindled in his career. He showed he belongs in the ring as a professional heavyweight fighter, and there's no reason for him to think about giving this up. This was an excellent comeback effort off of the Jeremy Williams fight, which really meant that this was going to be a gut test. All right, James Belanger has the word for us. Let's go to him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official decision. Judge Russell Nakaz scores the fight 95-94. Abdeen. Judge Elmo Adolf scores the fight 96 95 Navarre. All right, all right, all right. Judge Martin Casino scores the fight 96 93. Your winner by split decision, Mohammed Abdeen. So, Mohammed Abdeen gets the split decision. We would agree most with the 96 93 score for Abdeen, but uh, certainly there was a lot of close rounds, etc. Nice performance for this young man. Came to this country at the age of 16 from Syria to make his way as a boxer. 
He remains undefeated. He's 18-0 on three for Quinn Navarre. Very nice effort, even though he loses the ring with a loss, and I'm sure he's disappointed. He retooled himself, and I think improved as a fighter, and that in itself is something. When we come back, ringside report, we'll have a chance to talk about a pretty busy week in the world of boxing. Stay with us. Weeks ago, while sparring, the injury is basically a break in the thumb between the main joint of the thumb and the tip of the thumb. Um, at this point, there was no way that we could medically release Mike to fight. Well, that was the word on Tuesday when the doctors told us that Mike Tyson would not be able to fight against Buster Mathis. Hi, I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Bontemple. Welcome to Ringside Report. Now, subsequent to that, we had here on ESPN Dr. Flip Homansky from the Nevada Commission showing us the x-rays of Mike Tyson's thumb and pointing out that it was a very, very severe break that happened three weeks ago and then allegedly was re-injured during sparring. The, the first point at which we got an inkling, the public, that there might be a problem with Mike Tyson came when we saw a very rare public workout of Tyson. He doesn't normally work out in public. He did on Monday. And now because Mike Tyson doesn't have those public workouts when something like this precedes the postponement of the fight, then everybody is skeptical because of what happened. Now there is Tyson with the injury that's been bothering him for quite a while, for three weeks. And I think the question is, why wasn't this fight canceled three weeks ago? You know, you had the situation where Don King decided to put this fight on free TV. That was the MGM's out if they could do it to make this fight go away. It wasn't done at that time. It should have been done. Instead, it was dragged all the way to the last moment. And yet the other side of it is he really is hurt. Yeah, there's no question that Mike Tyson has a broken thumb, as uh, Dr. Homansky showed us uh, by the x-rays. You alluded to the fact that it wasn't canceled three weeks ago. I guess in many respects, that would have uh, taken away some of the cynicism that has greeted this. Because of the fact that there were two fights scheduled on the one day, going to be financial suicide all the way around. No